yesterday morning They let me know you were gone Suzanne, the plan they made put an end to you Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you in advance for liking and subscribing to my channel. Your support allows me to continue to do these reviews, so thanks. And don't forget, you can join as a channel member too. Membership guarantees responses to your comments from yours truly. But be a free subscriber because I'll be able to see your comments. I was contacted last month by a pen maker from Shanghai called Tianzi with an offer to review one of their new fountain pens, the Tianzi Piston Filler. I was given a choice of five finishes. This one is called Sky Blue, which is one of two demonstrator models. The other is clear with white swirls. And there are three opaque models in Mystery Blue, Dark Green, and Mauve. $40 on Etsy, this turned acrylic piston filler is definitely worth a look-see. You can find the link to the Tianzi Etsy shop in the description below. The pen arrived quickly, and I've been writing with it for now, oh, several weeks. I'm very impressed with this pen. Let me show you why right now. So today is UFPO Day, Unidentified Fountain Pen Object Day. I got this package. I think it's from China. I really have no idea what it is. I thought I had received everything I had ordered, but we shall see. Ah, I know what this is. Yeah, I did not actually order this. A gentleman contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing one of his new fountain pens. Showed me the models and asked me which I would choose. And I said, yeah, go ahead, send it. And here it is. I was kind of surprised by it. It's a uh, Tianzi and it's a new brand apparently. And here's the translation of the Chinese. The view from without losing body posture exhibition or cue handwriting as flowing clouds. Well, that's as clear as mud, isn't it? You know, I, mean, I think it loses something in translation. I'm sure it does. You can read it. No, I was just clearing my throat. Nice little logo. It's a little bit crushed, but I think it's intact. Let's see if we can pull it apart here. Here we go. Yes, I recognize this. It's in a pen bag. And I was interested in this because it looks like the smog. Uh, acrylic from pen bbs with all those lovely swirls and it comes in a number of colors um, and this one is a light blue and reminded me of a little bit of the pen bbs misty mountains and this is a uh, a piston filler uh, and it feels and looks a lot like the uh, pen bbs 309 which is a bit disappointing as a piston filler but the acrylic here is quite good. Look at this. Very nicely. And we can see it's flatted there. I'll have to see if I have a wrench that fits that to take the mechanism apart. That works flawlessly right out of the box. There's a nice chrome uh, sleeve on that piston rod. Lovely. Well, I'll have to clean that out ink it up and give it a try and what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample and after the writing sample please stay tuned as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen i mentioned in the introduction that i was contacted by someone from the makers of this new brand tianzi the brand name certainly sounds uh, more Italian than Chinese, but they are based in Shanghai and have given me a few details about the pen that I'll pass on here. They said that the pen is CNC turned acrylic resin and that the Tianzi logo, here it is on the box, is a stylization of a dragon mixed with the roof line of Tiantan. I don't know how to pronounce that. T-I-A-N-T-A-N. 
the Temple of Heaven in Beijing. It's easier to see that dragon on the logo on here on the box. Um, and here is a photo of the Tian Tan Temple of Heaven in Beijing. So you can see the similarity. And according to the email I received from them, the Chinese translation of dragon is Tianzi. So there you go. Stop breathing on me, you idiot! Overall, the pen is a good standard size demonstrator piston filler with rhodium trim and a lovely transparent pale blue acrylic with white opaque swirls. It looks very similar to one of my favorite pen BBS acrylics, and that's Misty Mountain. I had a pen BBS 355 bulk filler in Misty Mountains, but it was so gorgeous I gave it to my beautiful daughter on her birthday. So let's take a closer look at this pen. From the top, we have a slightly domed tapering cap finial in this wonderful solid clear acrylic with these beautiful white opaque swirls. Some of them look blue because you're looking through that pale blue clear acrylic at those white swirls. Then we have a silver colored ring that holds the teardrop shaped clip and that clip is very springy and very very usable the cap tapers up to about here uh, then a much shallower taper up to the very nicely styled silver colored cap band the band has a really nice coin styled reading at the top and the bottom it is deep enough to be quite reflective in the light and adds a bit of bling uh, to the pen the band has tianzi and china very very lightly laser engraved there's a small step down to the barrel which has a slightly convex curve over its length as it bulges slightly here in the middle and then tapers down to another silver colored ring which separates the barrel from the piston knob which tapers away to a slightly domed end finial the cap unscrews with just about one turn to reveal a tapering section of the same lovely acrylic which has a flare towards the number six size steel nib i thought this might be a yovo nib but i'm told by tianzi that they make their own nibs in-house before we get to the nib i have a comment about the cap threads the unscrewing of the cap it's only one rotation which is good but the threads feel a bit sloppy and I found that it tends to cross thread and stick either trying to uncap it or cap it. Uh, you have to back it up a little bit and catch a thread. And there's something about the threads that make it a bit sloppy. You see, I can pull it back and forth there. It sort of slips from one thread to another, which concerns me. And if you look inside the cap, uh, of course, you, there's a step milled in down there that uh, meets up with the section to allow you to seal the nib, and that's great. But these threads on the inside of the cap here, I can feel them with my finger, and they're very, very shallow. So that's what I'm thinking is making those cap threads slip back and forth and stick. My, that's my guess. I'm no engineer, but... Uh, but that's uh, a bit of a flaw right there. The section is really, really nice. It's long enough and thick enough to be right in my wheelhouse. I like the little flare at the end of the section as well. And let's take a closer look at this nib. The nib is very lightly laser engraved with the Tianzi Dragon logo, Tianzi and M for medium, along with some really nice scroll work. There's a plastic feed and the nib and feed are part of a unit that screws into the section and thanks to Chris Rapsaic or Chris Rap 52 as you know him uh, I now know this nib collar is compatible with number six Moonman nib assemblies here's a number six Moonman M600 and so that nib assembly right there is directly compatible with that one so I can just screw this nib into that section so those of you that love your moon man nibs 
that's an easy swap right there. And the section unscrews to give you easy access to the ink chamber uh, for maintenance and cleaning, which is really, really nice. And the end of the section here has a silicone O-ring uh, to help seal that chamber off, which is also really nice. The piston works really, really nicely. Got a little bit of air in there so I can move it. Just a little bit. There we go. But that piston moves in there very, very nicely. And this is a girthier pen than, say, the, the Pen BBS 309. It's, uh, it's a bit thicker in diameter there, so you're going to get a little bit more ink capacity out of this pen than the 309. The piston has a metal sleeve on the inside that's chromed. That gives it a nice look through the transparent demonstrator as well. One of the things I don't like about demonstrators is that sometimes you see the guts of the pen, which are not very attractive. So they've thought about that and they've chromed that little sleeve there. Uh, so it makes it look very nice and matches the rest of the trim on the pen. And I've opened up this just a little bit. There's a flatted part right inside there that you can, when you've opened this piston all the way up, you can get at that with a wrench. I don't have the wrench right now that fits that, but I have gotten this assembly apart. The size is 7.7 .7 millimeter uh, box wrench to get in there and unscrew that. It is the same size as the Wingsung 699 wrench and that is sometimes available on eBay. I've got uh, one of those wrenches on the way to me right now. Thanks again to Chris Rap 52 for that information. But I did get the pen apart, as you can see from this photo. The parts are substantial and well-made. However, don't do this at home, possums. You have been warned. Your intrepid inquiring mind took one for the team here when I disassembled this pen. The disassembly went very well. The reassembly? Not so much. Well, so much for making up for the emotional wounds of childhood. It took me at least a half an hour to get the pen back together properly. And then that isn't because the pen's parts don't fit. That, no, they do, except for that threading. It is because this is one of those piston fillers that takes a lot of trial and error to get that piston and the rod and the sleeve in the correct position so the piston is fully retracted when that knob is all the way closed. It was probably closer to 45 minutes. Boy, time flies when you're frustrated. <laughs> Sorry. The cap posts fairly securely, but it does back weight this pen significantly, um, and it makes it ultra long. Plus, uh, even though that cap goes over that piston knob, if you turn it like this, you can see I got it stuck on there. It'll actually disassemble the pen as well, because that those cap threads rest right on that ring right there. So I don't recommend posting the pen. Fortunately, when it's unposted, the pen is very, very comfortable in the hand and nicely balanced. And I love writing with this pen. It's that slight bulge that I mentioned earlier right there that sort of fills your hand, um, which makes it very, very nice. Um, I'm really, really enjoying the ergonomics of this pen in my hand. The Tianzi is available in five finishes, the sky blue, white, dark green, mauve, and mystery blue, and with two available nibs, fine and medium. It is currently priced at $40 US on the Tianzi Etsy shop, which is called Mystery House Crafts. I'll link all of that in the description. So now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Tianzi Sky Blue Piston Filler with a Pen BBS 309 Piston Filler in smog. 
a Pen BBS 355 bulk filler in Aurora, a Wingsong 699 vacuum filler. Now this one is available as a piston filler as well, and a Pelican M800 piston filler. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Again, posting the Tianzi is not a good idea. And the same thing with the 355. The 309 Pen BBS actually posts very nicely, as does the Wingsung 699. But the winner, of course, is the Pelican M800. The way it posts is just sublime, and the balance in this pen is just incredible. That's what you get with wonderful German engineering. And now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Tianzi Sky Blue Piston Filler, and it has a medium. Steel nib. Let's check the wetness. This pen is plenty wet. Very, very nice. And the nib is very smooth. There is some drag. I'm going to call it drag. It's sort of like uh, a feedback. It's not scratchy at all. Let's call it feedback. It's smooth in all directions. There's not a lot of line variation to be had. It's very stiff. It just has, maybe you can hear that, has some drag to it. And the ink today is Roshizuku Amahiro. And here are some close matches to Amahiro uh, from inkswatch.com. The line this pen makes is 0.5 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a western fine and a Japanese medium. And for our quote, And some quick writing. Yeah, the nib, the feed doesn't have any difficulty keeping up. And for some reverse writing, it's actually as smooth in reverse as it is in forward. And the feed keeps up fairly nicely, and you get a much thinner line. That's convenient for you sketchers. Look at that. Very nice. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I love this pen. The acrylic is really amazing and endlessly fascinating. It's every bit as nice as the Pen BBS Misty Mountains. And of course, I gave my Misty Mountains away, as I said, but I do miss it. So now I have a really nice replacement. I like the girth of this pen in the barrel and in the section. It is very, very comfortable in the hand and takes a ton of ink. The piston works flawlessly. 
which means this pen beats the Pen BBS 309 hands down. The 309 still has difficulties with endlessly sticking, meaning when it's full of ink and you try to move that piston at all uh, to re-ink it or whatever, it does not move. It unscrews. And look, it's doing it now. I think I did it, again. it disassembles the pen rather than uh, moving the piston. That can be a disaster. I haven't tried that in a couple of months, and there it's stuck again. Plus, the Tianzi is, oh gee, uh, about a millimeter thicker than the 309, and therefore a little more comfortable. Uh, but of course, that means you get a little bit more ink as well. I love the blingy cap with that reeded edge, like a like a coin, like a struck coin. That's very very nice, and I like the teardrop, very usable clip. I like that the section is removable so you can get at uh, that ink chamber for cleaning and maintenance without having to disassemble the pen, which I vow now to never, ever, ever do again. Ever. Never. 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 Never even though I'm getting the wrench for it. But I'm never gonna do it, I promise. Liar! Liar! My contact at Tianzi said they were contemplating a giveaway. That would be awesome. But uh, I'm keeping this one, guys. Sorry, this is mine. What's that? This is mine. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Basil? <laughs> now this nib is gonna take a little bit of smoothing I think I'm going to micromesh it a little bit. It isn't scratchy by any means, but it does have a good deal of friction and drags a bit on the page. So I'd like it to be a, a little bit smoother. It could be the ink. Amaero isn't as slick an ink as Konpeki, for example. So I may swap out the ink and see if that helps a little bit. Also, I like that this pen is 40 bucks. I've already sold my Twisby 580, so I can't show the comparison here live, but I think you'll get my point that I'll keep this Tianzi, but I'm not interested in getting another Twisby 580. This just feels like a much more substantial acrylic pen than the Twisby 580, which feels like, a, well, what it is, is a fragile plastic injection molded pen. And this Tianzi is $45 less than the Twisby. The only other piston filler in this range that comes close to this pen is the Wingsong 699. Now, this one I have is the vacuum filler, but you can get these in a piston filler as well. And this is a lovely, wonderful, wonderful pen. The last thing I like about this pen is the fact that it uses standard number six size nibs and the color is Moon Man number six size compatible. So if you prefer Moon Man nibs, this is a really easy swap. But that number six size nib is very, very standard and you should be able to fit most number sixes in there. I would think a Yovo would fit in there nicely. So if you like the Goulet Yovo nibs, you can put one into this piston filler if you like. I went ahead and bought another couple of the Kaigaloo Architect nibs from Bobby on AliExpress, as I mentioned in my review of the Kaigaloo 356. One of those nibs will go into this Tianzi, I think. The only negative thing I can say about the Tianzi is the cap threads. I'm constantly, see I was able to pull that right out, uh, I'm constantly getting them crossed up and having to be very careful about turning the cap backwards a half turn before trying to recap it. It sticks a lot and it feels like this isn't going to last long and that worries me. I'm hoping that they can fix that threading in their CNC machine parameters to make that cap more precise. So thanks go out to Tianzi for providing this pen for review and for me to keep. Ha 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 ha, forever. It's mine, you understand? Mine, all mine. Get back in there. Down, down, down. Go, go, go. If you guys want to send me another, that's fine. I'll gladly give it away to a subscriber. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. He asked him knowingly. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Oh. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel as well. For only 99 cents a month, 
and guarantee I will answer your comments. You might not like my answers, but I will answer nonetheless. And you'll get cool emojis Good. and Good. some okay. badges too. To to what that girl just said? And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote.